Tonight, calls for feedback years after Port Pirie brought in city dry zones. And after a roaring start, Auto Sprint organisers already casting their eyes to next year. This is Southern Cross News with Tim Hatfield. Good evening, but first tonight, SA Water has been forced to hose down speculation about the quality of Wyala's water after reports suggested an increase in a cancerous chemical in the system. They've said the increase caused by chlorine being put into the water system to purify supply did not put the public in danger. Our reporter John Hunt has more details. A report on Monday revealed that levels of trihalomethane, a byproduct of when chlorine is used to disinfect water, was found above recommended levels in Wyla. The chemical was found to be cancerous in animals, and concerns were raised about the quality of our water supply. But late today, Wyla Council and SA Water revealed that the city was incorrectly identified as having increased levels of THM. While Mount Pleasant and Blanchetown were correctly identified, the third site was over near Sejuna at the Air South Morgan Station, about 400 kilometres away from Wyla. Furthermore, Wyla's water supply is treated with a product that does not have the same effect when in contact with water. Supply in our region is treated with chloramine, a form of chlorine that does not produce the chemical THM. Our supplies have needed extra treatment due to the rain that has fallen over South Australia over the spring-summer period. Black water had entered the River Murray, with tons of waste and debris threatening the water supply. SA Water says the treatment is necessary to prevent waterborne diseases such as cholera and diphtheria developing. SA Health, which monitors water supply, also confirmed the health of our water, saying tests show no need to issue a public health warning. SA Water says it conducts up to a quarter of a million tests a year as part of its water monitoring program. The results are available online and they say anyone concerned should visit their website to keep an eye on our waterways. John Hunt reporting there. Port Perry Council is set to review the alcohol-free zones which were introduced to create family-friendly public spaces. After being introduced several years ago, the council wants the community to give feedback on how well the current dry zones are working. Alcohol-free zones are said to reduce antisocial behaviour, violence and vandalism in spaces that need it most. The Poor Peary Council restrictions haven't been updated in recent years, with the current regulation due to expire in July. Uh, the last uh, regulation was, was covered the last five years, and uh, just for the last five years they've been 24 hours. And so far the changes are paying off. The fact that we haven't had um, complaints coming in suggests uh, that uh, the dry areas are working well. With current dry zones located in the CBD Memorial Park Flinders View Park and along the foreshore, the council is calling on the community to have their say. Should they be 24 hours? Uh, there are other areas of Port Perry where um, there's been displacement in, in that... Um, Drinkers have gone to other areas and, and caused problems in other areas. Dry zone regulations start as an application to business and consumer services and from there can become regulation. However, for certain events there can be applications for exceptions. We are allowed to have an exemption uh, from those uh, uh, dry areas and we do that. Uh, we do that every year for New Year's Eve. Feedback is welcome to the council until the 5th of May. Just right into the council, right into uh, myself or to, right to the CEO um, and let us know what you think about these dry areas. Kaziah Sullivan, Southern Cross News. DP Energy has revealed plans to further expand the Port Augusta Renewable Energy Park. The proposed second stage of the company's energy development involves the installation of solar panels and battery storage, holding up to 400 megawatts of energy. Once finished, the project is expected to power 200,000 homes and save nearly 500,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide emissions each year. The expansion follows the first stage, which included 59 wind turbines and 400 hectares of solar panels alongside the main highway, 10 kilometres southeast of the city. The proposal could create up to 600 jobs during construction and will be submitted to the Development Assessment Board by mid-year. 
Port Lincoln's Tikal Auto Sprint has received the thumbs up from officials and spectators after it attracted 9,000 people over the Easter weekend. Spectators lapped up the high performance racing over two days. Organisers already planning on making next year's event even bigger. The Tikal Auto Sprint got off to a flying start. <laughs> The sprint has received high praise from all officials, even exceeding their own expectations. It was a mind-blowing experience after all of the work to actually see motorsport in Port Lincoln. The two-day event brought cars and drivers from across the country for some high-octane racing, transforming the streets of Port Lincoln into a racetrack. It was better than what we thought. The drivers were absolutely wrapped in the friendliness of the officials. The track itself and all the facilities that the drivers uh, look for was above and beyond their expectations. Over 9,000 spectators watched on across the weekend and apart from a couple of bumps, <laughs> it's been applauded as a roaring success. Many businesses receiving a welcome boost, the town's accommodation completely booked out. Hotels and caravan parks even forced to turn people away. Well, you've got probably 2,000 people who have never been to Port Lincoln before because of motor racing. They were here. The success of the event has organisers already planning towards next year's date and marking Port Lincoln down on the Australian racing calendar. Great expectations now by everybody, drivers included, in um, what's turned out to be a fantastic event. And in a lot of ways, it's put Port Lincoln on the map, especially with the motorsport. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Thousands of Optus users are currently without phone and internet connection after widespread outages are recorded across the air in York Peninsulas. The telco giant says it's identified a fault with the service and it's currently under investigation. It's the second time in as many weeks that Optus customers have been without mobile phone and a data supply service. Well, stay with us. Still to come in tonight's local news, could the Mid-North play a role in a potential industrial hemp growing industry? The details ahead. Welcome back. The Rural Medical Clinical School in Wyala will receive a multi-million dollar grant from the federal government to become a regional training hub. The local federal MP says the funding prescription will hopefully entice more graduates to serve in regional South Australia. It's a hard sell to get medical students to leave the comforts of Adelaide and become regional doctors. And for those who do show interest in going country, they have to return to Adelaide to finish their training. But now Wyla's Rural Clinical School will receive funding from the Commonwealth Government to support students in the regions. And hopefully they'll stay. Um, so we'll be providing um, supervision and education in Wyla to help support um, junior doctors, so it's... The school is one of 26 accredited regional training hubs across Australia, helping train people to keep their skills in the regions. Rowan Ramsey has welcomed the funding, saying without a change, the prognosis for rural health is looking grim. More than enough coming out of the university pipeline, uh, but getting them to live and work in regional areas is a great challenge. Um, it's, it's, it's been thus for quite some time now. Mr Ramsey says students who come out into regional areas enjoy the training as they get a more hands-on experience compared to metropolitan internships. He says keeping them in regional areas for a longer period will hopefully convince them to turn their short-term stay into a long-term career. Uh, this extra focus in that area is trying to get them more and more familiar with country living and see the advantages of living in the country. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Last Thursday, a bill to legalise industrial hemp in South Australia was passed through Parliament. The state is now in line with other jurisdictions who have already adopted the law and already locals in the regions are looking to capitalise. Farmers in South Australia will soon have a new substance to add to their crop rotations. Last week, a bill was passed to allow industrial hemp to be grown in the state. From here, the, the process will be that some regulations still need some refining. Once the regulations are refined uh, and are in place, 
the licensing will commence. Diana is a long-time local advocate for industrial hemp and has been a huge part of pushing the bill. She's confident processes will be in place to avoid growth getting out of control. Farmers are already ready to um, start applying for their licences and there's certain tests that they'll need to to meet. Farmers welcomed the news and are ready to follow in suit with other parts of the country. I know in talking to some people in our farming community that they're ready, they've done the research, they're looking to source seed stock already and um, they're hoping to get a crop rotation in, um, in this calendar year. The Greens' Tammy Franks led the charge with the bill in the state's upper house. She was wrapped with the response and is looking forward to future opportunities. There's potential as well for food to be opened up, depending what happens at the next minister's meeting, and that will be an entire new uh, part of the industry. And she knocked back claims industrial hemp is a recreational drug. Industrial hemp is not a drug. You might smoke it, but you'll never get high. You might get a headache. Kaziah Sullivan, Southern Cross News. A big shark joined fishermen off the York Peninsula over the Easter weekend. The suspected great white was spotted amongst boats off the coast of Port Hughes. It calmly approached a boat, giving the men on the vessel a good look and then disappeared back into the depths of the ocean. It was a good reminder to the public to be safe around the waters because the large animals are out and about. Well, greyhound racing in Broken Hill has been running smoothly since the New South Wales government scrapped its proposed ban last year. New reforms are being introduced to improve the integrity and improve welfare standards, and regional tracks like Broken Hill are a big part in the new structure. An ethical and sustainable greyhound racing industry is the focus of the New South Wales government. $11 million will go towards the Integrity Commission and another $30 million will be set aside to actually assist those organisations when it comes to track upgrades. The Broken Hill track has already seen upgrades and repairs in response to the controversy over the future of the sport. Obviously we missed out on a few meetings while we were getting the track up to that standard, but no, more than happy with the way the, it's going now. Greyhound racing in regional communities like Broken Hill is an important contributor to the local economy. There are also many jobs associated with the industry and there are also many businesses who are related to the industry itself. The new reforms include comprehensive investigations into injuries on track, official stewards from Sydney at regional track meets and tougher penalties for animal cruelty, among other things. As a part of the reforms, there will be an integrity commission that will be established. Now, as a part of it, there will be CCTV cameras at all public and certain private tracks around New South Wales. There'll be whole-of-life registration for the tracking of greyhounds. Minister Tool says there are three major racing industries in New South Wales, and he's committed to keeping greyhound racing a part of that. Patrick Roenke, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us. When we return after the break, Broken Hills Mountain Biking Group puts the call out to locals to come out and give the sport a go. The details ahead. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, time now for our weekly look at how things are shaping up when we head to the Bowser. And as we come out of the Easter period, we're not seeing a great deal of change anywhere. And unfortunately, some of the change we do have isn't in the direction we'd like. If we bring up the unleaded figures, Port Piri, Port Augusta and Wyala all remain unchanged this week from the mid to high, the mid to high 120s. Port Lincoln has seen a slight rise up to 129. And Broken Hill still sitting even. Adelaide is up around a cent. Turning the page to diesel, Port Augusta remains the same this week, just under 127. Port Lincoln has seen a slight rise as well, while Broken Hill has seen a very slight drop. And just remember, these are just the regional averages. So if you do spot a good bargain at a particular outlet, do let us know on our Facebook page. Well, the fifth annual Mindful of Dementia Day took place in Port Lincoln today, dedicated to spreading awareness about living with dementia in rural communities. The aim was also to educate South Australians on how to keep their brains healthy during the middle stages of life. It's an insidious disease with no cure, but for people living with dementia, it's at least now becoming easier. Finding a cure for dementia is obviously a very important goal worldwide, um, and it's uh, we are beginning, although not getting sufficient dollars uh, in research. But I think while that quest is on for a cure, I think it's very important that we manage good care for people with dementia. Seven out of ten Australians will be impacted by dementia in their lifetime. 
Today's forum just one of many initiatives helping those living with the illness. We've been doing um, the Mindful Dementia Day for the last five years now in, in Port Lincoln um, and it was an initiative mainly to get some education and training and information and resources um, around dementia out to the regional areas um, and to raise awareness about dementia um, you know, within, within the regional community. Ian Gladstone is one of 400,000 Australians living with dementia. He hopes his message will assure others battling the disease they're not alone. I had the choice when I was diagnosed uh, that I could cope with it or mope with it and I chose to, uh, to cope so I let other people know in the community that everything's Everything's okay and it's, it's not as bad as it looks. Although dementia is currently incurable, modern data is pointing towards active physical and mental exercise as the best protectant to shield our brains against the onset of disease. I don't think we value our brains enough and uh, certainly my message today is going to be about how we might think about how we look after our own health in our middle ages, between the ages of 55 and 75, to protect our brains from dementia. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Community organisations in Wyala have the chance to claim $50,000 in funding through the Grants SA program. An information session will be held tomorrow night at the Regional Development Offices from 4.30 with all groups encouraged to attend. The meeting will discuss changes to the application process, which has been streamlined to cut red tape as along with new reporting requirements. Local MP Eddie Hughes says locals should take advantage of the cash on offer. These grants are up to uh, up to $50,000, so it can make a, uh, a very uh, significant uh, difference to uh, um, the activity that we have in communities. The Broken Hill Mountain Biking Club is holding a Come and Try Day this weekend to encourage new people to the sport. The club caters for all age groups and riding abilities and says it's a great way to socialise and to see the landscape. It doesn't matter if you're an avid rider wanting to feel the rush, a part-timer developing your skills, or a newcomer keen to take it up. The Broken Hill Mountain Bike Club has got you covered. Open to everybody, all ages and all types and styles of riding too, you know. It's a come and try day, it's not a race day or anything like that. Guides will take first-timers out through the vast network of tracks available for all levels of riding. Right from, you know, five, five-year-olds even younger. The tracks are pretty basic for the juniors and there are some more technical trails for those with a little bit more higher skill level than you just your basics. For Linda Fitzpatrick, she's only just taken up mountain bike riding and she says the fitness you receive and the scenery you see is amazing. If you love the scenery around Broken Hill, um, this is a fantastic way to see it because um, you come out here at 8 o'clock um, on a Sunday and you're up on those hills. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's great for juniors as well. Excited, adrenaline pumping. And George says if you haven't got a bike, it's no matter. There'll be one for you to have a go on. The Come and Try Day is on this Sunday morning with registration at quarter past eight behind the golf course club rooms. You're getting out in the fresh air, your fitness, and it's a great way to socialise with people, like-minded people. You're getting out here and, and enjoying what broken out, the, you know, it's the great outdoors. Patrick Reinke, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us after the break. A look at how the local weather is panning out for the next couple of days. Welcome back. Having a check of the weather now. Showers around today again. Still warm though. 30 the top in Port Augusta and in Port Lincoln. 29 in Wyala. Port Pirie on 31. And a fine 27 over in at Broken Hill. On the national satellite image, a large cloud band is moving across the state still. And as a result, we're set to see this ongoing wet weather for a few days still. Out on the Gulf waters, the winds to 10 knots into the southwest. The seas blow a metre in southerly. Sunrise again around a quarter to seven tomorrow. So another wet day on the cards. 24 for Port Augusta and for Wyala with rain, the same in Port Lincoln, Port Perry 25 and 20 over in at Broken Hill. And the wet weather is said to linger into Friday and into the weekend for some parts, 24 on Friday and on Saturday in Port Lincoln, Cleve 22 then 23 but fine into Sunday, 26 as we get into the weekend in Woodner. Wyala with showers and 25 for Friday, then fine on Saturday and 24 the top. A similar story for Port Augusta, 25 then 26, Kadena with 25 both days but also starting to fine up.
Port Perry with a wet 27, then a fine 26 on Saturday and on Sunday. Clear 23 both days and staying pretty showery. Broken Hill showers on 22, and then 23 degrees to kick off the weekend. And that is the local news for this evening. Don't forget, as always, you can stay up to date with us on Facebook and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email and catch past bulletins on our YouTube page. We'll see you back here tomorrow night from 6.30. I'm Tim Hatfield from the Southern Cross News team. Enjoy your evening. Good night.